since you guys wanted to see some of this stuff. This is kind of like behind the scenes what's going on right now. So one thing, the other day I said I'm going to do the ESC testing. I actually got you know sidetracked with aligning my CNC machine because I really want to get this Terrant project up and going. And I finally did. Now all we need to do is cut the carbon fiber. So let me give you a little heads up of what's going on. So this was the first piece I ever cut for uh, the Terrant. The dimensions were correct. I was testing also the motor holes. Uh, they were correct also, but as you can see here, the CNC machine got misaligned because it just caught and then you know everything just got misaligned and started doing this, but then I stopped it. But I double checked everything, everything's perfect. So I was worried, just making sure that the frame size, everything motor to motor, everything's good, that I got the dimensions correct, and I did the holes also. So the holes are correct also. I mean, over here it's because it's misaligned, that's why you don't see it. So this is the version one of the 3D printed to see dimensions. This is version one with the holes to on the CNC machine to make sure everything's running good. This is version, we're gonna call it three. No, two, this is version two. This is with the holes with the for the uh, flight control, there's 20 by 20, and also the holes for the whole body here. Everything was perfect except this one just was misaligned by half a millimeter because I was doing these measurements by hand. And um, I finally did it. I just fixed it up from the 3D print so I don't waste wood. And um, yeah, here we go. It's awesome. However, you know, some of, you'll see the motor hole is not perfect. That's fine because I didn't secure it down with tape below it. And what happened is it just came loose. And then I stopped it and then I picked it up. I put the thing on the bottom. But the innermost holes, the most important ones, are complete and they are correct. But I know the motor holes are perfect also. I just need to secure it. So the Terret project is, we'll say, 80% complete. All I need to do is cut it out of carbon. This is the original bottom plate here. So as you can see here, this is how it comes. It has this little piece on the bat bottom here. And um, yeah, there's a missing standoff, but that's on purpose. When everyone, when we first received the Terret, everyone would remove this standoff so they could access the USB. So I need to go look for it. That was like way, like more than seven months ago when I did that. So I have to go find that one. But I really, I really don't care if I find it or I don't find it. It's cool though. So this is one thing that's doing, that I'm doing, or I've been doing. Another thing is I've been aligning and realigning and modifying my 3D printer. I changed the extruder to the Titan because I wanted to do flexible filament because I was sick of the Bowden buckling like crazy. So I've gotten uh, a couple of filaments just to see what's good for our hobby. I got like a, a TPU, obviously. I got 95A rating, 92A rating. These are the short ratings. Uh, you can search it or I'll leave a link to like a graph down below to show you. So it's very difficult with that graph to make out how strong that material is going to be and what it's going to be good for. So these are made out of 95A. They seem good. Uh, these are a little bit uh, stiff. And then I also have a 92A and I also have nine Ninja Flex. Ninja Flex is very flexible. I don't think it's useful for almost anything that we're going to be using. And this is something called Armadillo. It's like 85D or something. It's, it's too stiff. So it's basically like PLA. So there's really no reason that you would use this really. I can't find any reason. So good thing I just got a sample of these. So yeah, those are good. But this I also got uh, half a kilogram. So we're gonna be doing this. I got 95A, 92A. I'll be testing 92A very soon. And as you can see here, I wanted uh, to print one like the ones I get from Banggood. Like I really like how stiff they are. This is too flexible, but I think I just, cause I printed wrong or the file was crap. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and design my own here. Um, but yeah, as you can tell I had retraction on I was not supposed to and that's why it's string like crazy Those are all from the supports, but overall, you know, it came out pretty good if you look at it So I was very pleased with the Titan extruder there So let's just take a look here um, It was last night when I decided to change it and it was actually a very quick change. It just took like Two minutes to change it, but the thing is I had to redo the calibration and the calibration even between filaments is different now. Uh, if Let's just say I calibrated it for my TPU and I say move 20 millimeters, it'll move 20 millimeters up. But then if I put my PLA on the same calibration and I say move 20 millimeters, it moves six millimeters. It's because you know the thickness here and how the gears are pressuring or pressing against the filament, all that plays in the big role. So you really have to calibrate after every single um, what is it filament change and I just made a list down and I just do it with the G code commands now so that's all set I got the 3d printer with the auto bed leveling finally working because I was sick of sitting here for half an hour leveling the bed I just got to work with the G code I set the offsets and uh, yeah that's good in that perspective so this is just running perfect now uh, I could just put it in and it'll just do everything by itself and I don't have to worry about it so that's a huge plus and I also uh, 
downloaded and I'm using OctoPrint. So basically you connect your 3D printer to this and this to the power. And what it'll do is you just access your 3D printer through the web interface. And you can control it, check the G-code, give you a live view of what's going on. I even connected my Logitech camera and it'll broadcast a live feed for you. So you can even monitor it. It's, it's just insane. So I really like it. If anyone has the option to set up Octoprint, I highly recommend it. And here, CNC machine. This took me maybe four hours today to get it aligned. And you know, it, just, it, it went perfect. Everything went perfect, but right now, a little bit ago, it kind of got caught. So it just kind of uh, buckled a little right here in this area. As you can see here, this is how you know uh, if your thing is gonna be cutting in the exact range of your material. This is the UCCNC software. And I designed or I sketched up and designed the turret bottom plate with Fusion 360. And after Fusion 360, I did the uh, you know, the, the, the milling part, and then I exported the G-code, make sure everything's okay, exported it into the UCCNC, and then went ahead and made it. So it's crazy because I use the same file to 3D print, I use the same program to export it to 3D print that, and at the same time I use the same program to create the uh, cutting profile for my CNC machine, which is just awesome. Everything in just one program. So here's the 95A filament. I got like a couple days ago, and this is 92A, so I'm not used it, it's yellow. Um, I almost got two 92As, and I would have been very pissed off, because I think 92 is gonna be a lot more flexible than this, but I needed something a little bit stiff, but not too flexible. I, I'm st I still think this might be too flexible. So I'm gonna go ahead and check um, a little bit of a different rating, a higher rating, so we'll see how that works out, because I really want it to end up like this here. You see how stiff that is? That's just nice. I really like it. Let's take a look at this guy. You see how stiff that is? I I want it to be exactly like that. So that's my goal. I really like this stiffness. I got these from Banggood. I'll leave a link to them down below if you're curious. Oh, and some people are asking about my studio lights. I got these also from Banggood. So and and that stand thingy from Banggood. The mic I got it from one of my awesome subscribers. Uh, I traded a couple things and then he just gave me the mic and the whole setup right there. And the camera I'm using is the G7 right now on my phone because it's easier to carry. And overall, that's what's going on. Oh yeah, another thing. Um, next week, I'm going to start designing a mount for this to enable me to put four motors and basically a complete quad and simulate real flight. And we can get real good measurements. Now... What's so cool, we could watch each ESC because Siglint provided us with a four channel oscilloscope. So we could watch all four ESCs or we could watch the, you know, the battery, you know, the, the, the raw voltage noise that's going into the system, the five volt regulator, the 12 volt regulator, and the gyro maybe. So we're going to be able to do that, which is going to be pretty cool. And I think that's it. I think that is it currently. And yeah, that's really it. So, yeah, let me know if you guys like this. Uh, I'll keep doing this. Obviously, the turret, I will have a nice summarized video of all of my progress. I've been recording everything. So I'll make it into a nice little, you know, summarized video that's not going to be a trillion hours long. And it'll just be nice to, you know, digest and very simple with a lot of information that I've actually learned. I've already broken one, um, what is it, end mill on this guy. That was terrible. We only have two one millimeter end mills, so because the holes on this are two millimeter holes, so you can't use a two millimeter end mill. Well, you possibly can, but the program won't let me. You can't use a two millimeter end mill to make two millimeter holes. You need anything below a two millimeter to make that hole. So all I had was two one millimeter. Now, luckily, I bought one millimeter. I wasn't going to, and um, yeah, I broke the first one because I changed the speed while I was doing it and I get just it just stayed inside the, the material there. So this is my last one millimeter, but I did go ahead and purchase some more and they're on the way. And yeah, oh yeah. So to cut the carbon, what I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to need to install this. What is this? Forget everything that's inside of it. It's this thing. This is the milling bath that is for the uh, CNC machine here. It's specially specifically made for this machine and um doesn't come with a screen but here it is and like i showed you before 
we got the two water pumps i still haven't even tested how strong these are but it's so cool these take anywhere from six and 12 volts so i could basically kind of control the air the water flow so i don't have too much water going through because it's not that you know it's about it's about an inch and a half maybe of water you could put in here and um yeah you basically submerge the let's just say the carbon fiber and it, it has these little magnetic things here which help you hold it and they have ones that are pre-installed so you could like mount it with two of them make sure your carbon fiber is not moving and then use some of these to make sure extra careful that it's not moving because it has to stay elevated in the water and that's going to be a bit of work but right now i need to get testing on some escs i can't put too much more time into this um, I need to test those ESCs. I need to make that setup, but at the same time, I need to create, make this water bath, so I can, so it can enable me to finish the adapter also here. So the Terra is going to be basically my first project that I'm learning on the CNC uh, machine that I got, and yeah, so that's really it right now. Oh yeah, like I said, I'm going to be making uh, six and seven inch arms for the frog because I really want some, and if anyone wants some, uh, contact me by email. And um, once we get that started with, we can uh, see how we'll handle that. And that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope, you know, it was just something to watch. And, um, yeah. And that's it. So <laughs> I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.